welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Let us be quick. I do not like to look upon it. We're looking at an alien invasion movie with a difference. I have read. I have read from this book. Jehovah Witnesses from outer space. There was love. Of what do you speak? Okay, not really. But Teenagers from Outer Space is the story of a man who comes to Earth. He is the son of our leader. Who teaches us a lesson about peace and love. Somehow I feel that I've always known you. And who dies to save us. I shall make the Earth my home. And the name of this gentle savior? Derek. Right, Christ allegories to one side, these are pretty standard B-movie aliens. They have toy guns that reduce people to oddly articulated skeletons with a hook on top. They speak English perfectly and yet are flummoxed by the simplest of terms. In less time than it takes for the sun to rise and fall. You mean a day. Hop in, I'll give you a lift. Lift? What is this lift? That's a strange question to ask. Also, their leader has the worst fake beard I've ever seen. I was most disappointed to learn that you were deserted. Although this is a close second. There's no doubt a comet or a meteor. But what reduces this film from entertaining hokum to unwatchable tedium isn't the grandpa who trusts anyone who shows up on his doorstep regardless of how massively suspicious they are. Yes. How do I go there? Or the heroine who can kill romance in one sentence. You're so much like us. Like my brother, grandpa when he was young. Take the hint, Derek. She's not interested. I should not have brought you here. It's not even the horribly stilted delivery. I say, what is this? You are making some mistake. I am sorry I acted the way I did. And so you should be. But what ruins the film is that the whole story could be told in about 10 minutes if the central characters didn't keep missing each other. My golly, you missed them at the pool, eh? For example, Derek and Betty visit a scientist but just miss him, so they leave. Well, let's wait for him in the faculty parking lot. It's at which point he returns and bad guy four arrives looking for Derek. Where did he go? Out there? He kills the scientist, then leaves via the window just before Derek and Betty return. Oh, Derek! And this happens over and over as if the whole film is some sort of hideously boring game of hide and seek. Yeah, what's all the commotion about? But the film has a chance to redeem itself with a genuinely intriguing plotline. The aliens aren't here to conquer Earth or kidnap women. They want to use it as a ranch to farm their principal food animal, the Gargan. It suddenly fell limp and now does not move. It happens to every Gargan once. Overcoming this initial setback, the Gargan grows to gigantic proportions. If the movie can pull this off, all else is forgiven. Shut it, Derek! Shut it! The whole work, run! Go start the motor! Well, you see, that's a lobster. We have a weapon here that might be able to stop it. Is it a big bowl of boiling water? Perhaps some butter sauce? It will come to the city for more food, if nothing else. Well, what else would it come for? The vibrant theater scene? Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. This kills any chance of taking the movie seriously and torpedoes all those neat biblical comparisons. <laughs> On the other hand, what book wouldn't be improved with the addition of a giant lobster? Gosh, you've got to have more than that. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe.